Let y'all pile in, man. I hope everybody's feeling good, feeling great. It is Wednesday. We got baseball today. Baseball and basketball re- review. My damn. I'm going to visit Columbia very soon, too. I can't wait. South America tour. The Dominican. Colombia. Costa Rica. We hitting it all, man. Puerto Rico. Yep, just over here letting y'all pile in. Alfredo MG. What's going on? All right, letting y'all pile in, man. Everybody taking their sweet time today, huh? You already know what it is, man. I'm going to go ahead and get started in about 30 seconds, y'all. On my other phone, letting everybody know the show is starting. Dev, that dude, that's the dude. What's going on? All right, we about to get this thing started right now. So, it is what it is, y'all. Pretty much, um, this is the premier sports betting show, the primetime angles with the one and only Pop DiBiase. And boy, oh boy, what a day it was yesterday. Hey, MLB wasn't that great to us yesterday, but we did sweep out that Rays game um, yesterday. So, that worked out. That was some plus money back to you. And then, um, you know, the Laker finals situation, that kind of went to the left a little bit last night. We did get the uh, first quarter Lakers uh, over two and a half. But, you know, I had the four and a half for the half as well, too. Uh, Lakers didn't get that one in, and then we had the um, and then you know, the seven and a half. You guys saw what happened last night. Tyler Hero had to play Hero for all the uh, heat backers, so that was the agony of defeat right there. Uh, last night with the seven and a half, we were up nine points, and you know, it's always danger, dude, when you when you're up nine points and there's only so much time left to go, you can't predict what these guys are gonna do, usually. Teams just dribble it out and walk off the court. But Hero had another uh, idea in his head. He wanted to throw up a three to, you know, kind of just show that we're still trying and we're still fighting. Yeah, and it cost a lot of people money last night. But it's okay. It's okay because we got something for you Friday. So it's all good, you know, because we don't get that money back on Friday. I promise you that, okay? So we'll get to the finals in a minute. Let's go ahead and. Uh, give our old to the ladies though, because they they helped us cash a lot of as well too. And um, you know, pretty much shout out to the champions, uh, the Seattle Storm. And uh, those girls did they thing, you know what I mean? They did the damn thing, and they pretty much uh, the, as the picture shows right now, they pretty much did do their thing. They pretty much stomped out the competition uh this year as well too. They lost to some bad teams though during the bubble season and everything like that, but I think they they were just getting their rest, you know, just doing their thing and everything like that. So pretty much um yeah, this is a um congratulations to them. They went 6 and 0 oh in the bubble as well too. If you played them pretty much every game, there was only one game they did not cover the spread in and that was a game where they pretty much were um the first playoff game against the Lynx, but after that though, they literally took care of their business. They cost us a lot. They cost us money here, but that was on me because I thought that the Aces were going to compete, but the Storm were just too good for them. They just have too much for them, too experienced, and it is what it is. You know, the Aces are going through the growing pains, and literally three of their better players were not even there. Like, their best player was there, but the rest of the players that could have helped 
win that championship, they weren't there. So it is what it is. And um, yeah, yeah, we it's that's all that that's all water under the bridge now, fellas. That was last night. So we'll talk NBA in a moment, but let's just go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and talk about keeping up with the receipts. And uh, if you guys did uh, tune into the show on that day, um, the 24th of um, July, when we were first were coming back, you guys can even go back into the archives as well, too. But we had the Storm at plus 450 winning the championship. They were part of my five futures for this as well, too. So it's all good that I didn't bet them to win any games because they took care of business with the plus 450, man. So a 72 ticket goes ahead and cashes out. And when I say 72, it pretty much means is that if you put two dollars on it, it makes nine bucks it's track it's track stuff so if you ever bet a horse see it 72 it's a plus 450 okay for your dot for each one of your dollars all right so just a little bit of uh uh mathematics and some lessons for you but you know this is the start of the show so don't go nowhere stay your butt right there because we got this right here lakers big win last night Lakers are a game away from the NBA championship. Number 17, they're Lakers and LeBron's looking at number four. And um, pretty much this looks like it's going to happen Friday night. Um, it seemed like that, you know, the whole world was in love with the Heat after they got that win on Sunday night and everything like that. But, you know, we all saw it coming. You know, well, at least I saw it coming. So pretty much... um. And the people that told it, they saw it coming too because everybody made money that night. So pretty much it's all good that last night kind of went went to the left because that's what happens. You come back, you, you sweep big, then you come back in the next game expecting the same results, and it kind of backfires. But that's okay. That's okay. We This was a good game last night. The Heat showed their butts off, and they this was their last. To me, that was their last punch. That was their. We're now we're going into the to the KO realm, and you know the Heat did everything they possibly could to stay in this game, but it just wasn't happening. They tied the game up several times last night, but the Lakers always had an answer. And once again, hopefully you guys hit the over with KCP last night on points. He dropped 15 crucial points last night for us to go ahead and win that game as well too. So those five that he got late and the ten that he got early huge so the lakers all in all man they had a great great um little run last night in that game but i will address the seven and a half like i did to start off the show that was a damn shame right there because at least let us get our seven and a half since we couldn't get our four and a half at the half and um then you know we're pushing for the over and it just seemed like Things got a little stagnant last night, and they was actually defense was at a premium last night on both sides of the ball. But it is what it is at the end of the day. We got another game Friday, and I feel like we're going to clean up Friday night. So I'm not worried about it because we're going to be celebrating. I already got my champagne on ice. I hopefully, you guys got your champagne on ice or that Hennessy on ice, whatever your drink of choice is, because it's about to be a celebration if you have that Lakers futures ticket, if you had that Lakers ticket when we got back in the bubble. And um, pretty much um, we all know that it's a minus ticket now when it got to the playoffs. But still, if you got those of uh, those futures on the Lakers, oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's cash out time. It is what it is, baby. And um, there it is. But I think that the Lakers are a game away from holding up that ring. This ain't no homer talk or nothing. It's just how much more can the Heat give you? I think the Heat showed us the best efforts of what they can do in the last two games. And, you know, having back Bam was huge, but in a way, it was kind of uh, in the way. You know what I mean? But um, it's all good. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got the Clico on ice, the Moet. So we're going to be good to go. So pretty much um, we'll have some fun. Everybody uh, we'll, everybody show their celebrations on Saturday morning. But um, I think we're going to be partying Friday night, y'all. Keep it real with you. I know that there ain't no clubs and stuff to go to or anything. Not around my way out here in California right now. But I'm telling you, if there's, if there's going to be a party somewhere. So pretty much, man, get ready. Friday night. Bring that Larry O'Brien out. 
That's all I'm saying. But we'll talk more about it as we get through it during the week. Okay. So we move on and we have ourselves the AAC bets list. Um, We got a game tomorrow going on between Tulane and Houston. Um, I like Houston a lot in this game. I know Houston hasn't played much this season and this is literally their first game. But at the end of the day, though, Houston's the much better team and Houston got revenge on their mind. Last year, Houston was up big against Tulane. They wound up blowing the game last season. This was DeAndre King's last game as a Houston Cougar. So pretty much this, to me, looks like it's going to wind up being a very, 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 very good game. But I think Houston winds up winning this game in the end and so uh, by a touchdown. So that's why I think the 6.5 is perfect because it did open up at a 45 plus four and a half to the Tulane side. So pretty much what it's telling me is that they want to get some of that Tulane money here. And Tulane will probably be a popular uh, money line bet as well, too, for the dog for the dog betters like myself. But I'm not going to go that way. I feel like Houston opening home game and they are going to be off the chain. I'm telling you. So pretty much it is what it is. Real quick. I got it on mute, but I got the herd on on the other side of me. And damn, what happened to Joy? What happened to my girl Joy Taylor, bro? Like she's still fine, but damn, she looked like somebody angry ass mom now. Yo, the angry fine mom, like man, ain't shit. <laughs> All right, so back to the subject, man. Under fifty and a half, we have Temple Army. Um, this is gonna be a good game because Temple once again is another team that hasn't played much this season. They're all in on the conference ball only. They don't. They didn't have any warm up games or anything like that. Army is still seen as one of the better teams, but Temple always gives Army issues, though. Seriously, Army always has issues against Temple, Navy as well, too. So Temple, I feel like, can be in this game, and um, I think they're going to make this game wind up going under. I think that's what happens here. Both teams like to hold on to the ball for a long time. So the under 50 and a half seems like the logical play here. So let's see how it shakes out, and we move on. We got the over 55 and a half with ECU and U. UCF, USF, pretty much this the stank bowl right here. And live from uh, St. Petersburg, I guess, Tampa Bay. But thing is, though, it doesn't matter. This is a awful, awful, awful matchup. You don't know what side to go to. They have USF as a favorite. But the thing is, though, I don't know why they would be a favorite. I would call this game a pick em at best. So pretty much it is what it is. And at the end of the day, um, it is um, going to be the over 55 and a half ECU USF. All right. So we move on. And there it is. Pretty much the ACC bets list, and here we are. G Tech money line plus one sixty, and there it is. Um, pretty much um, love G Tech on Saturday. I think that they're in a good spot. They are going to be the home team as well too. They played against a lot of people, um, a lot, a lot. So it is what it is. <laughs> this guy, man, I swear, it's funny. You wasn't running up in here that uh, that next day after you lost. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I'm not in competition with you, bro. So it is what it is. Glad that you cashed. G Tech plus 160, though. That's what it is. Um, I like that game a lot. I think that we'll mess around, get the upset there. It is what it is. And we got V Tech, UNC, under 60. It is what it is, man. This is going to be the game of the week in the ACC. Both these teams, very, very good. And I think that they're going to lock it up defensively. Um, now, UNC, they, they score a bit. VTech was scoring a bit last week as well, too. But both these teams, they're going to match up real well in this one. So it is what it is under V under 60 VTech and UNC. Then we got NC State. NC State's in a really, really good game because they are not taking them as seriously as they should. As I told you guys before, NC State is a much better team early in the season. And I feel like they will be able to cover in this game come Saturday as well, too. Plus nine and a half NC State. Let's see how it goes. But. I like it. I like it a lot. And then, then we got Syracuse. And Syracuse is going to be, 
that's a tricky game right there. You can go either way in that game, in my opinion. Duke is struggling right now. They're 0-4, so they might need that one. But I think, though, I'd much rather go with the uh, home dog in Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. I think they got, a, they got a good one in them. They had a great game last week. They're starting to just get into the uh, flow of things. And um, there it is, plus 125 on Syracuse for Saturday. Then we got the over 44 with Pitt and BC. Um, really do like this one a lot. This is an old school Big East rivalry right here too. These teams are very familiar with each other. So the over 44 does seem likely to me because a lot of people will probably be betting for that under in this spot. But Man, I really, truly do think, though, this game does go over. It winds up finishing up maybe 24-21, something like that, 31-28. and 28. But they're going to score. That's how I feel on both of the, on both sides with this. And then we got the U. The U. This is kind of a stretch for me because we know that the U is probably going to be a team that folks have in the back of their head that they can upset Clemson. I'm just trying to hope that Miami keeps it close with Clemson. As I said to somebody the other day, Clemson is now the Florida is now the machine of the ACC. Before them, it was Florida State. Florida State for like thirty years dominated the whole conference. Then the Big East moved in; it became parity, and so then teams like Clemson started winning because, boom, they went ahead and started really recruiting all the top players in their state, making sure that they weren't going to Florida State and schools like that anymore. And then they took the Florida State formula as well too, where you red shirt high end freshmen and you so to get the get them prepared correctly instead of just throwing them out there to the wolves you know what i mean so it is what it is i love miami though in this game i think miami is, this is a the changing of the guard somewhat for them so i like them a lot plus 14 on miami the u let's see how it goes and then this is an old school classic game right here um I know the older people who are watching this know guys that are in their 30s and things like that and above know that uh, this was once called the game of the century when Bobby Bowden and Lou Holtz uh, squared off at South Bend almost like 25 years ago. So pretty much over 52 FSU, Notre Dame. This is a hell. Of, this is a this is a hell of a uh, rivalry in a sense because this might have been the most overhyped matchup I've ever seen when they had two college teams coming together. But it was right on the money because they were both one and two at the time when they had this game. But that's not the case today. You got um, FSU as a over fifty two. Um, I mean, you got FSU as a 21-point dog coming into this game. So times have surely changed. Notre Dame will probably dominate in this game as well, too. But the over 52 looks more than likely to me, man. I think that Notre Dame is more than capable of maybe damn near getting that on their own because the way FSU played against Miami and Miami's offense isn't as good as, you know, um, Notre Dame's offense. Notre Dame got a lot of top tier players there. So I really truly feel that over 52 will be a strong play. We'll probably get it before we even get to the fourth quarter. So there it is. There it is. All right. So MLB playoff bets for today. And you know what? I can't just say disregard the Marlins like that because I did choose them to win the series. I'm not going to say they win today, but. You know, it's going to be a pretty good damn game today. So I like the under five runs first five here and then the Braves under five and a half runs today. I feel like it's going to be a low scoring game on both sides. Regardless, it's going to come down to good pitching and timely hitting in this spot. And then I got the Marlins here plus one and a half to keep it close. Insurance play. We'll see how it goes, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. But um, it is what it is, man. Division rivals. Anything can happen. Good for you, dog. <laughs> Do your Atlanta thing, man. <laughs> Astros versus A's under nine runs, plus 100. And then A's minus 110 today as well, too. And over two and a half runs in the first five innings as well, too. So this one is what it is. Uh, pretty much. Um, so under nine runs, plus 100. A's money line minus 110 and A's over two and a half runs. A's got to get a win in the series. They know the Astros too well, and they was beating up on the Astros all season. And I know the Astros are feeling themselves, feeling real good about what's going on. And, you know, pretty much they they know exactly what to do, just like the Dodgers. So they might be on a, a course 
a collision course for another World Series against each other. So we'll see how it goes. But the A's, you know, I'm not going to pull out on the A's because I got the A's advancing. And y'all got to understand, playoff, playoff baseball is different. You go up 2-0. That's nice and everything, but you still need to win the third game. So pretty much it is what it is. Let's see how we go. We'll see how we do today. I think the A's are going to have a, um, a army type effort when it comes to the pitchers today. They're going to be throwing in different type of matchups like that. They're going to try to dominate that part of the game. And they got to do something about George Springer. If they got to walk him every single time he gets the, gets the bat, go ahead and do it. Because, shit, that's how they used to beat Barry Bonds and the Giants sometimes. So... It is what it is, and he just loves that stadium, dude. So it is what it is, man. And um, under nine runs, plus 100. A's money line, minus 110. A's over two and a half runs, first five. And then and then there was the Yanks and the Rays. And uh, the Rays, man, you know, I got them pe pegged to advance as well, too. But the Yankees probably may win this game today. They got to knock on the mound. And, you know, to keep it real with you, Stanton's getting really comfortable in San Diego as well, too. He's loving hitting that ball up out of there. But I don't know why this is a shock to anybody. Like, literally, John used to do a whole so much damage when he was on the Marlins in places like San Diego and L.A. and San Francisco. Those used to be spots he used to just destroy pitches at. So him, like, going crazy in San Diego right now is not a shock to me. And it's really kind of on time because this dude is one of the highest paid players in the MLB. One of the highest paid players ever. Thank you for finally showing up. The guy, is, so either you see him hitting home runs or you see him striking out. And I see him striking out more than he's hitting home runs. So I'm finally glad that the Yankees are somewhat getting something back on their investment that can get them to a World Series. But all in all, though, you don't know what you, you don't know what's gonna happen with them today. Judge and and Stan power hitters, man. But those guys striking out way too much, bro. Way too much for guys that are getting paid that much. All right, so I like the Rays plus one and a half. Charlie Morton should be good for us today. Then I like the uh, Rays money line plus one hundred. First five, first five, first five. I feel like they could be up one zip or something like that. Two zip something. You know, um, but hopefully they'll be up five zip or five, four or something of that nature because we got the Rays over four and a half runs as well, too. So we're going to see how it goes. Plus one and a half Rays. Rays money line plus 100 F5. A Rays over four and a half runs. Let's see how it goes. All right. So we got the Dodgers and shout out to the Dodgers last night. They went down one zip. They didn't even blink. They didn't get scared. They didn't do any of that. They went and got Dustin May and he started sitting everybody down. Then they went and got another reliever and started sitting everybody down. Then they went and got another reliever and started sitting everybody down. And then Kenley Jansen. And Mookie Betts came up big, showing that he is worth the money as well, too. Getting a big double last night, uh, pretty much breaking the game open for the Dodgers as well, too. And as you guys can see, I really, truly do feel that the Dodgers are just levels ahead of the uh, Padres. The Padres got the more exciting team. They they young. They, 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 they love to have fun. You know what I mean? And they, it's, it's all about having fun with them guys. And they slam Diego and they got the they fans out there going crazy for him. But none of that matters, though. You see how cool the Dodgers are about everything. They know what the mission is. It ain't about making the playoffs. It's about getting the ring. Dodgers are 33 years um, removed from one. You know what I mean? And I was four years old when they won the uh, last championship. Luckily, though, I my eyes was kind of open then. So I can't never forget what Bulldog did. So pretty much. Thing is, we got to stop living in 1988. The Dodgers need a, a fresh new ring. So they are on a mission right now. And San Diego drawing the Dodgers might have been the worst possible scenario for them because the Dodgers know them in and out. And I know that the Padres will say they know the Dodgers in and out, but they can't stop the Dodgers, though. And when it, the games matter, the Dodgers always beat them. So I'm just waiting for the inevitable with this one, I think this series will be over before we even get to the weekend, dog. To be dead and honest with you. But I can't write off San Diego that quickly. We will see how it goes. Tonight is a pivotal game because they do have Kershaw on the mound, but I expect them to dominate. Okay, so I got the Dodgers first five uh, minus uh, .5. So hopefully we're up a run and can go from there. And then over eight and a half runs, I feel like the Dodgers are going to bust out today. And then the Dodgers, once again, get over four and a half runs, get five, six runs a day. 
maybe seven or eight, maybe ten. I don't know. But the Dodgers, though, let's get some runs going in that big ballpark in Arlington and see how it goes. All right. So Padres versus Dodgers. And let's see how it shakes out. Let's make some money. That's going to be the end of our MLB bets. And I move on to Keeneland. With the primetime bets, Keeneland, the uh, beautiful track out in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, pretty much the home of the Breeders' Cup as well, too, this year. So if you guys are betting horses, that's a good track to be paying attention to this week. So pretty much, um, yep, they're going to be doing a lot of work today, Eric. Yes, sir. Best value today is in an allowance race, and that's going to be the um, 73K uh, 12 furlong race, too. This is a long race, so this is about a mile and three-fourths right here. So pretty much we're going to go ahead and take the um, seven-horse current. This horse is going to be trained by the legendary Todd Pletcher and going to be ridden by one of the top five jockeys in the world, Javier Castellano. And then um, we have um, – thank you, RJ, bro. Let's all make some money today. If you if you riding with what I put out, cool. If you're riding against what I put out, cool, in my Waldo voice. Let's just make money. That's what it's all about. But hopefully my end comes up a little bit better than yours. But I don't know. Let's go ahead and see how it goes. It's a 50-50 prospect. All right, so pretty much um, race seven is the Jessamine Stakes. And um, hold on. But race three, we're going to put the 7-8-1-4 together. You guys box it up, one four seven eight, And then we got race seven, the Jessamine Stakes. And it's going to be 150 k here. And it's going to be another mile race as well, too. I love this horse right here. This horse is uh, one on first asking at Evangeline Park. And then came back around and finished second at Kentucky Downs um, in a turf race of that was for $400,000 and pretty much comes back around in this race right here. And uh, Kentucky Downs is, uh, to me, an uh, even faster turf course than... Um, to, than um, Keeneland. So what happens here is Taylor Tourist will wind up being a big winner, in my opinion, today. And the horse is 6-1 to one right now. So this is a race 7, and hopefully we can still get a good price on the horse. And it's going to be number 3, Taylor Tourist. And we're going to go ahead and put the top horses here, 3, 7, 9, 10. And you guys box it up just like that as well, too. And then you guys can key it, 3, 7, 9, 10. We move on to the nightcap, which is going to be race 8 on this 8 race card. And we have the key horse being number 9. Epic Adventure, who's a first timer, and this is a maiden claiming race as well. Too, we got this is a Wayne Catalano trainee as well, and so we'll see how um, this one shakes out. And Epic Adventure right now is twelve to one on the morning line, so hopefully we'll get a good number on this horse. And the top horses in this race for us today, and we'll box them up like this: one, six, eight, nine, eleven, and this will be our super high five play as well too. And then in the late pick four races five through eight, we're four deep in. Leg one, two, four, seven, nine. And then in leg two, we're one and six in that race. And then in leg three, we're three, seven, ten. And then in leg four, it's six, eight, nine. And then the total for this is going to be $30, all right? So hopefully, $36, sorry about that. So hopefully we can go ahead and cash out this ticket and move from there. But at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. Let's go ahead and make some money. That's what it's all about. So... Pretty much, I thank you guys so much for tuning in to the show once again. It was another great show. I know that we just had baseball today. Tomorrow, I'll be bringing up the Big 12 and the Conference USA tomorrow, their bets list as well. So you guys can get those, and um, we can get those in as well, too, and um, pretty much talk about that. And then uh, talk some more NBA finals and things like that, what to expect tomorrow, you know, any breaking news or anything of that nature. And then, you know, talk. Thursday night football as well, too. So we got a full slate, and tomorrow we got Golden Gate uh, as well, too. So you guys make sure to tune in at 9 a.m. to the Premier Sports Betting Show with the one and only primetime capper, the <laughs> with the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper. And I'm telling you guys right now, this is another Prime Wave Media production. And be on the lookout as well, too. Tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific time, we premiere the NFL Bet Exchange for week five. All right? So thank you guys so much. There is no me without you. And I'll see you guys soon. But I'll be so keep cashing those tickets. Bet with your head and not with your heart. And I am gone.